Dear Tim and Moby, please make a movie about the periodic table of elements. From Lauren. Sure. You're overreacting. It's not that complicated, really. The periodic table of elements may look complicated, but considering it's a list of all the chemical elements that occur in the universe and then some, it's actually pretty simple. It categorizes elements according to the properties of their atoms. Atoms, you'll remember, are the smallest unit of an element. They're made up of a nucleus composed of protons and neutrons and a number of electrons orbiting in different shells or orbitals. It's the numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an element's atoms that determine its properties. That's right, Moby. The configuration of these three particles is the only thing that makes one element different from another. The modern periodic table of elements organizes elements so that it's easier to see how elements relate to one another. Well, first off, the elements are listed by their atomic number or number of protons in their atomic nuclei. You can find that here, along with the element's symbol, name, and relative atomic mass. You can read across the table this way. Hydrogen has one proton, helium has two, lithium three, beryllium four, boron five, and so on. Reading across this way, the sets are called periods. You remember how electrons orbit in shells, right? Well, periods describe the number of electron shells that elements have. Period one consists of only two elements, hydrogen and helium. These guys only have one electron shell. Period two contains elements with two electron shells. The first shell contains two electrons, and the second one can hold up to eight electrons. As you read across a period, that outer shell fills up with electrons. So lithium has one electron in the outer shell, beryllium has two electrons, boron has three, and so on. By the time you get to the far right side, the outer shell is completely full. The sixth and seventh periods contain so many elements, scientists took some out and put them underneath. Well, the configuration of electrons in an atom's outer shell plays an important role too. It determines what other kinds of elements it can bond with. On the periodic table, elements with similar configurations of electrons are arranged in vertical columns called groups. Groups are numbered one through eighteen. In some of these groups, the elements don't have that much in common, but that's not always the case. Take a look at group one. All the elements in this group have exactly one electron in their outermost shells. That means they're likely to form positive ions. They're also likely to bond with elements in group 17, whose outer shells are one electron shy of being completely full. The periodic table is also organized by color into different categories. These categories are organized by properties of the elements. Alkali metals like sodium all can react with water to produce alkaline solutions. Alkaline earth metals like calcium also produce alkaline solutions when combined with water and are found all over the place on Earth. Transition metals like iron are strong and shiny. Poor metals such as lead are soft with low melting points. Semi-metals like silicon conduct electricity only under certain conditions and are useful in electronics. Non-metals have a variety of properties and include the carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen vital to life on Earth. Noble gases like helium and neon have outer electron shells that are full, and so they don't often react with other elements. So there you go, the periodic table of elements. Well, I've seen tables with elements going all the way up to atomic number 118, but any element above 92, uranium, is too unstable to occur in nature and has to be made in a lab. Another cool thing about this table is that because it's based on number of protons and you can't have half a proton, scientists are pretty sure there aren't any holes in the table. Using an early version of the table, scientists were even able to predict the existence of elements like neon and germanium before they were even discovered. Yeah, see, well that wasn't too hard, was it? Yeah, Moby,、uh, you give up too easy.